All right. We've heard from experts about the impact on warehouse operations that e-commerce is causing our customers and how Zebra's valued ISVs and partners are changing their solutions to Android. In short, productivity, accuracy, and future readiness have never been more important to our customers. At Zebra, we have been working hard creating the ultimate solution to meet these new omni-channel demands, and we're excited to introduce the ultimate ultra-rugged MC9300, the next evolution of the world's best-selling and most trusted enterprise mobile computer, delivering the ultimate Android platform for business. With us today is Jeho Choi, who's the director of design of Zebra's talented industrial design team. Interestingly, Jay helped design the original MC9000 about 15 years ago, back in 2003. You've not changed a bit, you look great. <laughs> yeah. What's your secret? Yeah, Sorry. Right. <laughs> now, not only has that product remained relevant for the last 15 years, it also set the bar for the ultra-rugged mobile computing form factors. Jay is now part of the team that created the all-new MC9300. We also have with us the product manager, Linsert Welcome. Now, when developed the strongest product in the portfolio, we also asked the strongest member of the team to actually lead that program. <laughs> Jay, let me start with you. Now, what were your team's objectives in actually looking at the MC9300 when you started the project? Yes, uh, so the principal design objective was to make sure that uh, the familiarity to the user is maintained so that we can create uh, ease of migration and continuity going from the older terminal to the new terminal. At the same time, we wanted to improve the operational stability and reliability um, of the customer. So to move from those lofty goals, what specific attributes do you actually look at from a design perspective to achieve that end goal? Okay, um, yeah, first of all, um, you know, we wanted the MC9300 to uh, adapt and evolve the ultra-rugged heritage of the MC9000 DNA. Um, and the way how we accomplish that, um, you know, today we have nearly over three million devices out there. Uh, we have nearly two decades of service data uh, and field knowledge. And that's a huge advantage for us because uh, that enables us to uh, have a deeper and better understanding of what, what and how it fails. Uh, at the same time, it enables us to have a better understanding of uh, how to design an even more reliable product. So on that note, can you talk a little bit about some of the design and testing things that you do behind the scenes to actually bring the product to life? Yes, uh, so th throughout the design process, we uh, actually went through hundreds of different failure scenarios through um, you know, computer simulation, uh, digital uh, stress analysis tools, as well as uh, physical, uh, we had multiple phases of physical testing with tool parts and assembled units um, to make sure that we're not only meeting the uh, environmental conditions, but we are exceeding it. So Linsa, it's, hey. it's great to have you with us. So I'm sure you've logged more miles than you can count and eaten more road meals <laughs> <laughs> that you'd actually rather forget when you were working uh, and researching the MC9300. But what are some of the common customer requirements and feedback that you've heard? And I suppose table stakes that you've brought in from Jay's team now into the, the product design sphere, if you will. So uh, a couple of the things that, that we've heard, um, number one, you can't have a discussion about the MC9000 heritage without talking about durability. So that's, that's table stake number one for us. Ergonomics is, is always also at the top of the list uh, when you're talking about somebody holding this device for eight, nine, 10 hours a day, right? Uh, and then uh, as we go further down uh, is improved performance, whether that be scanning performance, Wi-Fi performance, you know, including new radios such as NFC, uh, uh, as well as the ability to do more with the device when you think about, you know, including a camera and, and things like that. Uh, and ultimately, you know, you cannot have a discussion today about a pro releasing a product 
without the Android discussion. And that's one of the things that, you know, we've been peppered with those questions over the last couple of years. When is the MC9000 going to get an updated Android version? And I think we finally did it with the MC9300. Now, in there, you talked a couple of times about improving things. What are some of the key things that you guys focused on to improve, Lancer? So, from a processing perspective, from a speed perspective, you know, we're talking about platform that, that really zips by. Uh, we're, we're also talking about battery life, shift length. Um, you know, we're, we're now talking about doubling up uh, the battery life that an, an MC9000 used to have. Uh, we're also talking about the fact that we're introducing newer scanners into the product platform. We started refreshing our scanning portfolio a couple of years ago, but now bringing in something like uh, uh, the 4850 ERI that can scan as close as, as three inches and as far away as 70 feet. So we're, we're bringing a lot of those things into this product, uh, including bumping up the durability a little bit uh, from an IP ceiling, uh, going, going to IP65, IP67. And what we're also seeing, you know, is a growth in other areas, uh, such as manufacturing. So that includes bringing in something like a DPM scanner. Uh, we're also seeing growth in, in, in our cold storage uh, uh, areas. So bringing in a dedicated cold storage variant of this particular device uh, is something that, that we've also uh, heard from our customers that, that are now uh, involved in that space. And we're also hearing that from our partners that are now being pulled into that space as well. So we heard earlier from some of our experts around some of the elements that they love in mobility DNA. How do you see our customers are able to transition or migrate, if you will, from some of the older school technology now to Android? Are we making that migration process easier? So uh, for us, uh, you know, as Jay mentioned, is, is familiarity, you know. So we, we've, we've done several things in terms of, uh, of bringing the familiar forward, right? One, if you look at the design of the MC9300, it looks very similar to, a, to an MC92. So a user today can, uh, that's using an MC92 can easily pick this device up and bring it and go on their task. It's not, a, it's not a, a wholesale replacement of an entire warehouse. They can live alongside each other, a 92 and a 93. Also, uh, you know, when we're talking about the predominant use case, which is terminal emulation, uh, from a mobility DNA perspective, we offer All Touch TE, which you can run in its, its native green screen mode. And then uh, at some point down the road, when you're ready to make that transition to a more rich UI, you can easily do that on this device as well. So, and it's a seamless transition uh, to take it from today to tomorrow. This is a major shift. What could people expect in terms of life expectancy for this product? So my, my expectation is it'll be around for the, ne for the next 15 years. Uh, so when you're, when you're talking about uh, uh, a platforming strategy that we have as a whole uh, within Zebra, right? Uh, you know, our, our sales uh, uh, cycle for this is five years plus another five years. So we're right there, we're looking at uh, 10 years. And then you have two years of support of, from a software perspective uh, via Lifeguard on the product after it's gone end of life. So you're, you're talking nearly 12 years of of device life cycle. That you can that see point. now, and we exactly. design it to be as long as possible. Exactly. Now you mentioned the 660, and I um, we have something else to share on the 660 today, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, we have a, a TC8300. So, uh, you know, both products are releasing relatively around the same time frame, um, and we expect that the this extends the TC8000 legacy uh, into the future along with the MC93. Uh, you have a, a keyboarded version and now you have a, a, a touch, all touch version for the, for the warehouse. Uh, so, you know, we expect it to be ready to do things like augmented reality and, and those types of future application to make uh, the lives of users uh, easier. 
So if you've developed on the 93, you can instantly port it over to the 83 without question. Exactly, and that's that's the power of platforming. Um, you know, you can port it across not only 93, 83, but also some of the other products that we have on our SD660 platform, which includes the TC77, uh, the TC72, the TC52, uh, and the TC57, as well as the PS20. Very good. So, so tell, us, tell us more about new markets where the MC93 could drop into and expand into. And then on top of that, also talk to us about different applications for the MC93. So when we're talking about markets, we're talking about, you know, for us, again, as I mentioned earlier, cold storage is, is a big one. You know, we, we have, we've had cold storage products within our platform, but we haven't had it on this particular product, which is the biggest warehouse product uh, within, within the industry. Um, you know, we're also talking about manufacturing, whether that's, you know, auto manufacturing. Not, so we're introducing a DPM SKU that has that external illumination that, that, is, that has been so successful for us uh, on the other side of our business, the DCS side. So uh, we do see uh, that coming in. We, we see ourselves pushing in the, in the same use cases, maybe new markets, but those new markets have some very similar needs to the markets that we address. Wow, what great additions to what is already the industry's largest portfolio of Android mobile computers. Our customers have clearly taken productivity and efficiency to the next level in their warehouse with this next evolution of the world's best-selling industrial computer, the MC9300 and the enhanced TC8300.